Hi everyone, this is Guido with DrDuino.com and today I want to show you something for the model railroad enthusiast and that is a traffic controller system for an HO scale model railroad. Now what I've built here using the Dr. Duino shield which is this red one right here is with just these two buttons I'm simulating that a train is either on the track and or that the, there is no train on the track. So what we're going to do here is first right now this traffic controller light is showing us that there is a train at the station and we're just going to press this button and we're going to show that the train has in fact left the uh, left the track and if we wanted to simulate that a train is now coming back onto the track we press this first one and you see the state change from green to yellow to red we'll do it one more time and it will stay red until the track is clear or again, again, I simulate it by pressing this button. Now, what I want to show you here is that we did some pretty cool things because let's say that this is a little bit too bright for you and you just want this to be a bit dimmer. So what you can do here very easily is this is called the potentiometer back here. And what we're going to do is just change the brightness level. So I'm going to turn this kind of back and forth and I'm going to be hitting this button here. And what that's going to do is change the intensity of that. All right, so you see it went much brighter. We'll turn it all the way left, and that's as bright as it will go. We'll turn it all the way right, and what you'll notice actually is that it'll go off because there's no more pulsing happening on the LED. And then we'll back it off just a little bit, and you see it comes on nice and dim. We'll go a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, and then we're full on again. So what you can do now is pick a value that you like and let's just say that uh, let's say that this brightness is what you prefer. Now all of the lighting that happens, all the control will use that same exact brightness for all of the colors. So for green, yellow and red, they'll all have the same variable brightness. So let's just see how that works. And so you, know, you see now it's actually much dimmer than what it was. So one more time here, we're going to put it just to see a stark contrast. We'll put that all the way up, right? So I just turn this all the way up. And now you see that the lights are very bright. And I'm going to bring this almost all the way down and back it off just a little bit. And you see that the lights are actually much dimmer now. So this really gives you the super fine control that you want uh, to create in your in your model rail. Now let's take a look at the actual code to see how we're running this and it's really very simple. Now this is called the IDE what you see here and this is where you do all of your programming and if you haven't done any programming before uh, really don't sweat it because it's it's the language that it uses is so simple uh, to understand. Um, it, it's, it's almost impossible to get stuck. It's, it's really a very intuitive language. Um, so it's, it's written in a type of C language, and what we see here is, and I'm just going to highlight, so from line 15 to line 34, this is one section. Line 36 to line 43, that's the second section. And then 45 until 72, this is your last section, and this is kind of the meat and potatoes of the code itself. So just to kind of tell you what each section is doing, this section up here from 15 until 34, all this is doing is setting up what's called variables. And those variables um, is what we're using to tell the processor, and that's this guy here on board, uh, how things should be set up. Now in Arduino land, there's two major components. There's the void, there's the void setup, and this is where you tell them the, the processor here that's on the Arduino itself, hey, I want you to make certain pins, and that, that's what all of these four lines of code, all it's saying is, hey, I want you to make these four pins responsible uh, for being an input for these four pins, these four buttons here. Now, you'll notice here that I've got two extra ones, which I'm, I'm actually not even using, so we can actually remove it. So all you really have to worry about is these two. So, and what this is doing is this is saying, um, 
I want to I want to make one button and we're going to call it simulate train detected and that's this button the first button that you saw me press a bunch of times right that's this guy here and then the second piece here is uh, no train detected and that's going to be this button so what we've done is we we've, we've mapped this button to the processor and this button to the processor now when we get into the kind of the meat and potatoes this is where things get really cool and really fun um, this is the loop and all this thing is doing over and over and over from now until infinity is going around literally in a loop so it's going to go from uh, line 45 all the way down to line 68 and then come right back up to line 45 and it's going to do this forever and ever and ever for as long as there's power that's all that this is going to do so let's pick this apart uh, line by line and you'll see it's really very simple there's really no magic to what's happening here the first thing that we need to do is we need to go and read these two buttons and what do I mean by read what that means is I need to uh, have the processor go out and say hey are you guys being pressed or are you not being pressed and that's what these first two lines do so the train detected so let's look at line 45 train detected is I'm looking at this button here and I'm saying hey is anybody pressing you right now uh, line 46 is saying, hey, is anybody pressing you right now? Uh, these next two lines of code, this is what's responsible for reading the value from this potentiometer, which is really just a variable resistor. And as I turn that value clockwise or not clockwise, um, a different value from the pot to the processor is being read, uh, and that's called being digitized. Now, these two if statements is really where everything is happening. Uh, it's saying if I detected a train, meaning was this button pressed? If it was, then what we want to do is begin the sequence. So let's just take a look at the sequence again. You're going to see line 53 says um, stoplight, the, the green part of the stoplight. I want to set it to the value that I received from this potentiometer. Then I want to wait a certain amount of time, and I'm going to tell the, gr the green LED now to go off. And then I'm going to wait, I'm going to tell the yellow LED to come on at that same value that the potentiometer is set to. Then we're going to, go, uh, we're going to delay for a little bit, then we're going to turn the yellow light off, and we're going to do the same thing for the red LED. However, in this particular uh, instance, the red is actually going to stay on to whatever this value was set for. So just uh, uh, again, just to reiterate, when I press this, we are actually running through this code that you see right here. Now, uh, now that the button, so once it's done with this, what happens is it goes from line 61 and it pops out to line 68 and goes right back to the top to line 45 and begins to look for the buttons being pressed again. Now, uh, so this time we're gonna press the no, the no train detected button. And in that event, what happens is it looks and says, Hey, uh, is there a train detected? So was my button low? Uh, if not, then was no train detected? Um, and in this particular instance, just because of the way things are wired on the Dr. Duino shield here, uh, we want to look for a high instead or a one or a digital one. Uh, so what this is going to do is going to say, okay, uh, now I want to turn the, the green back on to whatever value that this potentiometer was set to and just turn off, completely turn off the yellow and the red. And that's really it. So I'm going to press this button here and we're going to go right back to green. And that that's it. I mean, it, it's really pretty simple what what this is all doing. And this is really just the beginning of what you can do with the Dr. Duino married to the Arduino Uno uh, shield that you see here or board that you see here. So there's really a, a lot of other peripherals on here. And so here we've got a bunch of LEDs for you to do all sorts of simulation and or just kind of learn how LEDs work. Uh, of course, we covered the buttons that are here. We've got a bunch of potentiometers down here for you to mess around with. But real uh, oh, and a buzzer. This is kind of fun. You can make some uh, kind of 8-bit music. It's kind of a neat thing. And up here, what we have is an RS-232 port. If you don't know what that is, that's just a really simple way of communicating. There's still tons of equipment on the market today which still speak this RS-232. It's a little bit older, but Tons of equipment still use this same protocol. 
Now, that's really just the beginning of what this shield will be able to do for you. So initially, you're going to learn how to do, you know, how, how to control your LEDs, your switches, your pots. You're going to do that all inside of your code. Once you become really good with that, you're going to begin to start looking for other stuff that you can do with your model rail. Maybe you want to make your very own DCC controller. Or maybe you have a bunch of turnouts that you want to be able to control. The possibilities really are limitless. And it all starts with the Dr. Duino kit that you see right here. When you order your Dr. Duino kit today, I'm offering a special deal for the Model Railroad subscribers. You're going to get the Dr. Duino Shield and Arduino Uno clone, free shipping, my VIP group where you get to ask questions, and also a free gift worth $9.99. And I can't tell you what the gift is. It's just too cool. You're going to have to add it to your cart to find out what that is. If you were to buy all of this separately, it would cost you almost $182. But today, and today only, it's $59. Bucks. That's it. Oh, and one more thing. I'm offering a free 12-part video series, which will get you going with Arduino fast. It really is the best way to get started. So I hope that you found that really exciting. All you have to do now is click that button that says, yes, I want a Dr. Duino starter kit, and you're on your way. Hope to see you on the other side. Talk soon.